All right, got the new Motocraft purge valve. Uh, let's take a quick uh, resistance measurement on this Dorman part. Uh, what do we got? 16.9 ohms of resistance on that. Let's check that against the Motocraft part. All right, she's hooked up. Not much of a resistance difference there. Uh, 17 ohms on the Motocraft, so not a lot. Um, now, if you guys haven't watched, it's ironically, uh, Scanner Danner did a two-part series. I'll put links in the description on this part as well as the other one. Um, go check that video out that he did. He released it around the same time I released mine yesterday. Kind of dealing with the same crap, but uh, I'm interested to see his part three when he gets his Hyundai part. So, anyways, guys, make sure you check that out. But there you go. There's the resistance on the two. Um, let's check... I want to do some other checks real quick just to uh, kind of follow up from where I left off yesterday. So I'm just going to get set up and uh, we'll uh, obviously use the Autel here um, to do our checks. Um, since I know that that um, Autel bidirectional is able to turn this on, uh, bidirectionally turn on the control wire uh, for this purge valve all the way to zero. Uh, duty cycle. And I also want to use the duty cycle option on my graphing meter to look at the duty cycle. Um, so let me get set up. I will also show you what it looks like to use a test light hooked to B positive on that control wire um, as we, you know, go from 0% duty cycle all the way up to 100%. So let me get set up. All right, real quick, just to give you an idea what my setup is. Um, I've got this on a 20 volt scale, two second screen. On the scope here with a filter on just to clean it up a little bit <clears throat> and you can see my keys on engine off and we're getting that two and a half I believe it was what two and a half volts on that bias uh, two yeah 2.4 it's bounce around a little bit but <clears throat> nothing to be worried about um obviously scopes grounded to the battery here. Uh, make sure that grounds good because sometimes I'm grounds yeah my ground wasn't quite there, but anyways, new valves in. Um, I have it disconnected. I'm on the control wire with the um, yellow trace, and then the purge valve. I've got my vacuum line to my vacuum gauge hooked up already. Um, so when I plug it in and command it on, we'll be able to see that vacuum. Um, this, of course, is our canister side. Um, going back to the canister. Um, so there's the setup. Um, the auto is up. So let me get into the um, bidirectional for that um, purge valve. And we're just going to look at the duty cycle on the um, bias voltage first here. So we want to go into PCM. Active test. Purge duty cycle for the EVAP. <clears throat> and okay. And again, it brings up the screen. Don't know why. I'm just, I think it's so I can select what I want to look at, but I'm not I'm not gonna use that. So there you go. 0% duty cycle right now. So let me I'm gonna increase it in you know to 10%. <clears throat> and there you go. And that's what we were doing yesterday, right? Okay. So now, let me show you what this looks like using a test light hooked to be positive on that control wire. So to do that, what all, all I did was I just disconnected my yellow scope lead. I've got my test light now. You can see the light's dim, and it's probably going to be hard to see on camera, but it, it's actually, you know, it's kind of flashing. And I'm at 10%, so I'm going to go up to 20. You see the flashing? Hopefully you can see that. 30. 40. 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, full bar, decrease, 90, you know, I'm just going to keep coming down all the way to zero again. You're going to see that flashing and you're going to see the light slowly 
get really dim again all the way down until we get to zero. And there's zero right there. You can see zero, that two and a half volts. If I were to hook this test light up, in fact, I can do that. So I put my scope lead back in. You can see we're back at two and a half volts, right? I've switched the polarity. I'm, my test light is now hooked to um, <clears throat> battery negative, okay? And you can see that we got a good connection. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna touch my, I'm gonna touch uh, that end of that front probe and you're gonna see me pull that bias down with my test light. All right, here we go, I'm gonna touch it. And there you go. That's me touching the control wire on that front probe there and I'm actually pulling that two and a half bias right down to ground. So it doesn't take much. Obviously it's not gonna light the test light because there's not enough voltage there. There's a resistor in the computer behind that two and a half bias. Again, Paul Danner does a lot better explaining that stuff, so go check Scanner Danner out on those two part, uh, that two part series. Or it's gonna be three parts, I believe, but uh, I'll, link it, I'll link it in the description. All right, so um, what we're gonna do now is I'm gonna plug it in and we're gonna check the vacuum and bi-directionally control it and we should have good vacuum. Now. Um, I will start the vehicle for that too even though you know technically you're not supposed to but i know it's going to work so let me well <laughs> we'll find out but i'm i'm pretty confident we're going to get we're going to get a good vacuum here now so let's do that okay a little little circuit design i guess explanation so the green wire right now i'm i'm probed into the control wire which is that yellow the white one you're seeing there the green one is our power feed so that's a constant 12 volts i know that's good we checked it yesterday once i plug this into this solenoid <clears throat> i want you to watch the two and a half um bias that we got on the control wire right you're gonna see this go to 12 volts and that's what it should do because the solenoid is not being commanded on right now right we're on a zero percent duty cycle so we're at close to battery voltage battery's probably getting a little low um there's our voltage okay so now when i command this on um, again, key on, engine off. If I command this on, we should see our duty cycle now. So I'm at 10%. 20. 30. 40. 50. You can hear it. 60. 70. 80. 90 and you can see that pulse with changing right full bore okay so let me decrease this back to zero and again you can hear that valve okay <clears throat> and let's start this and make sure we got good vacuum up huh? okay so it started we got no vacuum got that little nothing to worry about there now let me go to 10% purge okay and what I'm gonna do I'm gonna have to constantly bleed this off okay and you can see now it's working right we're done right there we don't need to go any further um, I guess I could go to we'll go to a 50% purge show you how good that vacuum is. Huge difference, right? Huge difference. So, we're done, guys. I just exited out. <clears throat> this car is fixed, all right? No need to smoke it. No need to get all crazy with it. I mean, I can if I want to, um, but I'm gonna tell you right now, now, hold on. Let's let's confirm we don't got any leaks in the system, so we don't have a comeback for something silly. Okay, so when I went into, let me show you this real quick. So yesterday, when I went into the hotel and I went to this active test on the EVAP pen, uh, purge valve duty cycle, I didn't read the screen. It says press cancel button if I don't want to monitor live data. Well, I do want to monitor live data. 
as you hear now, this thing's going into a purge. Um, let's see here. So what what do we want to look at? I want to look at canister venting status. Commanded evap purge. Um, fuel tank pressure and KPA. Let's take a look at this once. So this thing is already purging at 48%, just idling here. You can actually hear it. I don't have the hose on all the way. Alright, hold on. So, let me go out and clear the codes. Alright, you can see I cleared the codes. We got no faults. So, let's see if we can test this and make sure the system actually seals. Alright, I got my <coughs> PIDs narrowed down and what we're going to do, um, you see I got the EVAP emission canister vent valve off. Um, off varying or on it's just going to be an on off okay 100% on that vent valve and it'll close it fuel tank pressure and KPA uh, 0.12 but it's also saying inches of water so whatever there's the voltage on our fuel tank pressure uh, sensor 2.63 and we're venting right now um, within in the off state so let's command it on I don't have the vehicle running That pressure should go up, um, and it is. But what we're going to do is to help bring the pressure up is we'll put the um, smoke machine on the purge valve um, on the the hose running from the purge valve. I'm going to put the smoke machine on there. To be completely honest with you guys, I really don't have to do this because if you look, <clears throat> it's been on for quite some time now. Well, a few minutes I had to run in the back room and get the smoke machine, but take a look at the inches of water and the voltage. See how the pressure is going up? Just sitting here, not venting. Now, if I had a large leak, okay, a large leak, um, that wouldn't be going up like that, okay? So the fact that it's going up, <clears throat> the fact that it's going up tells me it's fixed. All right, so we're gonna leave it at that. Um, let me command this vent valve back to open or venting, which would be in the off state, and that pressure should go away. And it does, and you can see the change in our voltage. Okay. If I turn it back on, okay, our pressure should start coming back up, and it's going to take a while, because, you know, it takes a while for fuel vapor, so, but you can see the voltage is coming up, we're done, it's fixed, I'm okay with it, I'm shipping it, that's why it had the... That's why it had that code, because, like Paul was talking about in his video, you know, if it's not purging when it's going into its EVAP monitor, um, and you read into that, um, it's going to think that, you know, it's got a large leak, because it's not going to see it pull the system into a vacuum like it's supposed to, to test it, okay? And, you know, the computer doesn't know any different. It's, it's commanding this purge valve. It's duty cycling it, and it expects to see... That fuel tank pressure sensor change, and if it doesn't, it thinks it has a large leak, and that's exactly what was happening. And um, for whatever reason, you know, it, it'll flag the the gas cap as well. Um, could I smoke this and verify? Well, <clears throat> is it really necessary? I don't think so. Um, just based on this alone, um, you can see that just sitting here talking. That pressure's gone up, so if I vent it again, boom, bolts drops, pressure goes away, we're done. Thanks for watching, guys. If you have any questions, drop them down, but I'm shipping it. I'm okay with it. Thanks for watching.